the Philips CDI, and you thought the CD32 was a crap console. Released in 1991, the CDI comes from a brain fart of an idea between Sony and Philips when they decided to expand their CD technology to include audio text and graphics that would later become known as the Green Book. I recently picked up this CDI on eBay, but it needs a bit of work. So let's take a look. Right, just before we look at the console itself, I thought I would show you quickly the listing for it here on eBay. This is it, Genuine Philips CDI 450 console. It was listed for $34.99 or best offer. I got it for a best offer of £30 with the free delivery, which was very good. Genuine Philips CDI console, parts on, faulty spurs repairs. Condition for parts and not working. Nothing else included console only, so I did have to go and buy a power supply separate, which was another £15, so we're 45 quid into this so far. Powers on and displays fine on TV, just not reading discs. So, my initial thoughts are we're dealing with a dead laser. Right, let's get a look at the console itself. Okay, let's take a look at this. The front of the console has one input for a single joypad. You can't get a breakout cable though for two player. To turn to the side, we have our on off switch. And look at that, a lot of nasty, nasty looking corrosion. I wonder has something been spilt on this? And uh, this side is where the laser is. On the back of the console, we can see more corrosion up to about this point here. We get our standard composite and left and right stereo output. There's a DC output jack here, 5 volt, 50 milliamp. I wonder what that would have been used for. And this RJ45 socket here, no, it has nothing to do with networking. This is actually the DC input. I have never seen a power supply that uses an RJ45 before. Oh well, I suppose as long as it works. This side of the console doesn't have very much going on. There's another wee bit of corrosion down in here. And that's pretty much it. Push the button and lift up. I can't help but wonder if that is meant to uh, lift itself. Don't know, we'll have a look at that when we get it apart. This bit here is where the digital video cartridge would go. We plug in here and my goodness, look at the corrosion in here. So yeah, I would say without doubt, something has definitely been spilt on our CDI at some point in the past. And I'd just qu very quickly like to say a massive, massive thank you to Mark, AKA Super Duper over on the Ami Bay forums, because he has very kindly very kindly sent us his spur digital video cartridge for the Philips 450 which just plugs in there like that I'm not gonna fit that yet though we'll play with that later if we can get this laser sorted out laser and spindle Wow that is incredibly stiff to move I thought I was just going to flick that there and it would spin. What is going on here? Okay, that's weird. That should be a lot freer than that. Okay. Right. Let's start doing some testing. We're going to plug it in. That's uh, power up the console. Did say in the listing, the power's on fine, so we're not hooked up to a TV or anything yet. 
let's just see what happens. Okay, we got green light. We've seen a wee bit of activity there at the laser. This is the switch down here. It senses when the lid's closed, so let's close the lid like this. Push this in here and uh, see if there's any activity up in the laser. Okay, so the head moves. That's good. That tells me that the logic in here is working. Can we actually see if there's any light out of it? Yep. You can make that out on the camera there. Let's do it again. So the laser seems to be working. Let's try a disc. It's a pressed audio CD. I always like to test with these first of all before trying anything else. We'll just leave it there for now. You'll need the lid closed for the wee magnetic catch up in here to hold the disc in place for it to spin properly, but let's see what happens. Hmm. So the access light is flashing, but the disc is not turning. Right. I think what we should do next is uh, take this apart. So it's fairly straightforward. Two screws here, two screws here. Right, the case should just lift off. It's actually quite a tight fit. You almost need to bend the corners out to get it up. Come on. Don't lose the screws. And there we are, we're in. Just having a quick look at that mechanism there. It actually, uh, I'll show you this. The lid mechanism that I thought should maybe pop up on its own. It looks like it may be dead once upon a time, look. But I'm, well, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I don't see any springs or anything, or, or a spring might have went. I don't know. If anyone has one of these, could you maybe let me know in the comments below if this is meant to lift itself when you pop the lid? You can see Something has definitely been spilt on this. I mean, look at that there. That's unbelievable. The corrosion in here. On top of the the shield here as well. Really badly corroded. So we're going to have to do something about that. Let's see if we can get the shield off and have a closer look. Just to want to be sure that that corrosion hasn't got onto the board itself. Oh, I need to watch these. I'm free. Right. Again, you can see the corrosion on the bottom shield is uh, it's really bad. It's really thick down there. As you can see. Look at that. Disgusting. Right, but luckily it does seem to be pretty well clear of the board. There's our battery chip, which obviously must still be good in this. This will probably fail at some point though. There's a battery in here, and the only way to fix it really is to grind off the top section of this to remove the battery, and then you wire up your own. There's our processor. Our 68070, but don't let that fool you. It's not like this has one better than a 68060. This uh, chip is basically a 68000, just Philips' own version of it. And it's running at uh, 15 megahertz, if I'm right. Our video encoder chip. There only is a composite out of this at the minute, as I was saying earlier, so. And one of the future episodes, if we can get this working, I want to see 
if we can tap RGB or even S video or something off this chip to try and get a better image out of this thing. A few capacitors about it that will probably change. They do look okay, there's nothing bulging or anything. In fact, with the varying colours of caps, just makes me wonder, have some of these possibly been changed in the past? You wouldn't know. Right, so here is our CD drive and this incredibly stiff spindle. I wonder if the whole thing just dropped. Maybe the motor's dropped or maybe even just this spindle has dropped. As you can see, there's a wee lip. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. See that there? There's just a wee lip there at that point. I wonder if the rest of that not to be all flush with that. Could it be something so stupid and simple? Look at that. That just popped up. I'm just pulling at that slightly. That's popped up. And now, there's no way it's going to be that simple, is it? Is it going to be that easy to fix? Where's my disc? Let's power it on like this. And um, we need to simulate the lid close, so it's just we switch down here. Is the disc going to turn? Oh. Turn it on! Idiot. Right. Let's simulate the lid closed, and is the disc going to turn? <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. So it was definitely trying to read that disc. Is that all it was? Right. Let's put it all back together. What will we do? We'll hook it up to the capture device and uh, see if it will boot up this disc to its CD player. Let's try that. Right, let's get this thing hooked up to the capture device and uh, see if it works. Okay, so we have our audio CD in. Now, if this does play, I will have to turn the volume down straight away so I do not get a copyright strike. We're just connected up to the capture device here, just in uh, OBS. So, first of all, let's power it on. Make sure we are getting our video output that we were promised. And uh, yep, there it is. So it is outputting to the TV okay. And it's telling us the lid is open. Let's close it. Accessing the disc. Is it gonna play? It is. All right, I have to turn that down so I'm not hit with a copyright strike, but it's playing the disc. You can see the audio levels here. Turn it up for a second. Well, there we are. That is the simplest fix ever in the history of CRG anyway. I think uh, what we'll do is we will try, we'll stick in Mark's um, FMV cartridge. And he also very kindly, kindly sent us a couple of films. We have Ghost and Beverly Hills Cop. That's uh, what we do. I also have this one from my collection. Let's try a bit of Star Trek, shall we? I think we should. Unfortunately, I don't have any games yet to show you, and uh, I actually do not have a joypad, but we have another idea to fix that. Okay, before we get too carried away with that though, I am busting to find out if this works. I'm sure it does, but I just want to see what it's like. Look at that, this spinning away. 
Unbelievable. Right, let's take this off. And this. Just sits in there like that. Simples. And a bit of Star Trek. Let's see what this does. Is she going to play it? What's happening? And it works! And it works! Unbelievable. I honestly cannot get over how stupid of a fix that was. Ah. We have no controls, so we cannot click play. Oh well. Right. I think that will do for this video. We have our CDI working. It's reading discs, playing them okay. The next thing we're gonna to have to sort out though is this, the input. So in the next video, we're gonna be playing with this, we Arduino, and we're gonna be using it to build our own controller. The genuine controllers for these are in the round 100 pounds, believe it or not, which is absolutely crazy because they're not the best controller. So what we're gonna do is build a SNES, the CDI interface, using this Arduino. And then we can use our SNES controller on the CDI. Right, until then, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen, please hit that thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next part. And I'll see you again soon.